Hey guys, MomoGuru here, and I'm going to give you a little run through on some of the new features on the update. Um, let's go ahead and dive right in. One of the most notable and main improvements to the game has been the reformatting of batch files. Um, there's been a lot of new commands added in and functionality added to the uh, command line, the hardware diagnostics module. If you jump in and you type help, you'll notice things have been formatted quite a bit differently. So let's go ahead and run through there, and I'll, I'll give you a little rundown on how some of this works. Um, I guess most notably will be the program.run, which will run programs off your memory bar. They will You can have them um, launch the program anywhere you want on the screen, and you can even have it connect to security checkpoints, which you can then follow up that command with a program.start, uh, which will then activate the program. So now you can do automated hacking. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at a batch file. So some of you guys who have not seen this will know what the hell I'm talking about. I'm going to jump into the file manager and jump into my batch folder. And you can see I've got a repair file that I just decompiled. And we'll take a look at a batch file. All right, so you see the first line of my batch is uh, script.unload.all. That'll unload all your scripts. You'll notice now the batch files are no longer separated by commas. It's not comma delimited. Everything is on its own line. And with some of the new commands, it's going to be a lot easier. Now, uh, if you remember before, the, the way that we were loading scripts with batch files, were, we were targeting file IDs. And as soon as you delete an ID and it shifts your IDs around, well, then it messes up your batch files. Well, that's no longer the case. All batch files are now done with um, names. So instead of script.load.58, it's now script.load.connectionrepair version 10.1. So you can see now you're actually going to type out the file name. And another thing you might want to notice is you can call batch files from another batch file. So you see my repair batch file is going to load up all my repair scripts. It's going to run them all, script.run.all, and then it's going to load batch.shields, which will launch my shield programs and get all of those started for me. So now that I've got my notepad here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, recompile my batch file so you can see it in action. Drag my batch compiler on top of it turns it back into a batch file. And now if we go into our command line, I can do this, batch.repair, which will load all my repair scripts, should start them running, and then launch all my shields, and start my shields. And there you go. So you can see it runs all my programs and launches my shields for me, and starts them all. Pretty fucking slick. All right, so some of the other things you're gonna wanna take a look at in here with some of the, the new commands is uh, the program.run. Now this is a really, really powerful command. Um, it's been updated and changed, and I'm going to show you how this works. So we're going to jump into the GPS. I'm going to go ahead and connect to Masula Corp so I can show you how you can hack a security checkpoint via the command line. No drag and drop, no, no mouse. All right, so we'll go, we'll, we'll just leave it just like this, right on your home page. So right here, we have a new command called server.url. And what that does is let you navigate pages on the browser. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, can't I just type in a browser link to a back end and then I'll be able to hack real easy? No, no you can't. So the way you do it is you mouse over whatever link you have here. Let's say we've got um, employee login, zero underscore employee login. And I'm seeing that down here in the corner. So you see right here, load zero underscore EMP underscore login. So I type in the command line server dot URL dot zero underscore EMP underscore login. And that is not correct. Oh, I mistyped that. Okay, let's try again. Server dot URL dot zero underscore EMP underscore login. And you can see that it navigates to that page for me. But now we've landed here on a security checkpoint. And what I'm going to do is I want my password cracker to launch right on top of it. Now I can get all tricky and, and play with the command so that I, I can put it in an X and Y coordinate, but for purposes of this video, I'm just going to scoot the checkbox so that when the program launches, it's right over top of it. And this is how it works. I can do a very simple program.run.1. And you can see it's going to run Cyber's Recursive. Nothing new there. But check this out. Program.run.1. Dot 100, dot 100. X and Y coordinates are now going to move that program over to here. See, I moved it down 100 pixels and over 100 pixels. That's how I got my shields to launch all the way down here. So you can make your programs launch where you want them to launch. 
All right, let's take it a step further. We're going to go program.run.1, 100 for the X, 100 for the Y. And if you look over here next to where it says security level, you'll see a SEC 8, SEC 8, and then number 41. The number 41 represents the, the level of the security checkpoint, and this is the ID number. So I want that password cracker to launch and connect to that security checkpoint. So all I have to do is my program.run.1.100.100.sec8. Dot 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 and you can see now it connects the program. It's ready to be launched. Well, I don't want to have to click it, so I'm just going to type program.start.1. Bam, I'm cracking the checkpoint. So you can see that you can use batch files to automate a lot more of your hacking. Um, let's see, what else? What else we got here in the update? Let me go ahead and connect, disconnect from that. I'll type help. Um, let's see. Um, I added a local dot list dot file type. Um, load. There is now a script dot run dot all, so you can run all scripts rather than running each one individually, which is great for repair scripts. But when you're dealing with combat, you want to make sure you're spacing out your attack scripts because you can only deliver enough damage to kill one component at a time. So if you deliver a thousand points of damage and his component only has 50 health, then you've wasted 950 damage by launching them all at once. What you'd want to do is try to space them out every 15 or so seconds so that as you're killing one component, your, your, the, the other scripts you have are going to start beating on the secondary and tritary components. All right, so let's see. Anything else new here? I think that's pretty much it. You, you know, the program that installed, that's old. Um, Batch.stop, that's old. Yeah, so that pretty much covers some of the new commands there. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at this. We now have a video player. Don't pay attention to these buttons. I'm trying to debug a problem with the sound that is a, it's a YouTube player bug, but I'm trying to figure out a workaround for it. For some reason in the browser version, when you close a playing video, the sound keeps going, and it is so annoying, and I can, I've can i done everything in the world, me and a few hundred, hundred other Flash developers trying to figure out how to work around this, this YouTube bug in uh, AS2. It's a pain in the ass. But anyway, um, you notice these are all now YouTube videos, so you can see if you want to load a video, I'll open up my file manager, and I'll jump into some movies, and you can save the video links and just drag your video player and it'll load up the YouTube video and play the YouTube video for you. So that's a new feature. Um, and with that, you can go into the chat room and share YouTube videos by doing bracket vid e bracket equals, and then you type in the, the I, just the ID number. You don't want the HTTP, YouTube.com. You don't want any of that. You just want that eight-digit little ID number. And what it'll do is post the link in the chat so that players that have their video player open, if they click the link, it'll load that video so they can you can share videos with each other on YouTube. I thought that'd be a very helpful feature for new players that are trying to figure stuff out, and then veterans can just post links to the uh, various tutorials, the, the extremely outdated tutorials that probably do more harm than good. Yes, I'm working on it. Anyway, I just wanted to give you a quick rundown on some of those new features. Um, We've got a lot of other stuff on the way. Uh, I've got the next few weeks off, so I'm just going to be plugging through some stuff. But anyway, stay tuned. Uh, Momoguru out.